Hi, good evening, everyone. I'll give it one more second for everyone to file in. And it is great to see you all tonight. Thanks for joining us. This is part two of our seven part series, Look Into Boston College. Tonight is No Greek Life, No Problem. Uh, a look into clubs, organizations, and traditions at Boston College. Uh, I'm your host. My name is Chris O'Brien, Associate Director of Admissions, uh, speaking to you from a nondescript hotel room in Skokie, Illinois, uh, where I am one of the admissions counselors on the road looking for the class of 2027. Huh. Uh, I'm joined by a panel of experts, and I know this for a fact. We've worked together before. These are Boston College students that are at various locations, secret locations around campus, and they volunteered to spend a little time talking about these important things on campus. You know, for many of you, you're tuning in from far away, maybe some of you far, far away. And if you're going to come to Boston College and you know about the academics and you know a lot about you know, what the outcomes might be at Boston College, maybe you're concerned about making friends. And granted, I don't even know if you have friends in the high school that you go to already, but I bet if you have friends in school, you probably made those friends from making connections through clubs and organizations. And you also probably made those friends and shared a lot of great experience with your friends through the great traditions at your high school, whether they were from athletics or the performing arts, or just the times that your community in high school gets together. These are important. And I suspect that these are things that you care about when you're thinking about how to get to college, how to make friends in college, and how to make your college experience the most worthwhile. So that's what we're gonna spend a lot of time with tonight. So we'll have our four our panelists introduce themselves and I'll lead them through a discussion of traditions that mark the calendar of Boston College. And then we'll get into organizations at Boston College clubs. You know, what, what are they academic? Are they cultural performing arts clubs? How students become leaders in clubs? What are some of the clubs that they admire from afar? What are the clubs that they joined right away? Good clubs for first year students to be a part of, et cetera. So we have a lot on tap. I'll try to get your questions, but you know we're just going to have so much wisdom and experience to relate to you. I can't guarantee we'll get to all the questions, but my friends put their email addresses in the in their um, camera boxes. So as we get through this conversation, and maybe we can keep the conversation going as we continue on through your college search and trying to find out more about BC. See, I've talked too long. That's what Skokie, Illinois, does to you. It it just fills you with energy, and you want to keep talking and talking. So let's do let's do this. Let's introduce our panel. And I'm going to have them go around and we'll we'll go in alphabetical order of your last name. So you guys are BC students and you'll figure it out. So what I'd like you to do, we're going to know your name, but tell us where you're from. Tell us what particularly you study at Boston College. Uh, and then tell us a little bit about your favorite Boston College tradition, um, whether you know it's something that is athletic or something that's much more embedded into the culture. Talk a little bit about your favorite tradition. And after we've introduced you all, then we'll get into some questions. So um, I'm not going to say who I think goes first based on alphabetical order. I'll just cover my mouth and make sure they go first. Hello, everyone. My name is Julia Bowers, and I am a junior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, majoring in sociology and psychology, and then double minoring in medical humanities, health and culture, as well as management and leadership in our Carroll School of Management. And I'm originally from Dallas in the great state of Texas. So feeling the cold here this week. Um, my favorite tradition here at Boston College actually happens to fall on my birthday this year, this Saturday. That is our red bandana football game. Um, so if you haven't heard the story of the man in the red bandana, we had an alum. His name was Wells Crowther. He played on our lacrosse team, always wore a red bandana. And upon graduation, he went to go work in the World Trade Centers. Um, he was known for his service around campus and his heart for others. And when 9-11 happened, uh, his family wasn't quite sure where he was. He was lost in the rubble. And then a story came out in the New York Times about the man in the red bandana who had found a working staircase and saved 18 lives, and that was Wells Crowther. So here at Boston College, in his honor, we have the red bandana football game in 5K every year. 
Our football team gets brand new jerseys, um, white with red bandana print. We're all wearing red bandana print instead of the traditional maroon and gold. And I think that it really just speaks to the heart and community of Boston College. Your engagement with the red bandana starts day one at orientation. You're given a red bandana just to remind you of who you want to be at Boston College, and that's men and women for others. So definitely my favorite tradition, excited to partake in that this Saturday. And I think just really simplifies that here at Boston College, we want to produce people of courage and character, not just intellect. Um, and that's something that really sets us apart. Yeah, thanks, Julia. Um, I really hope we get a win this Saturday, Red Mandana game. We're playing Clemson, so tall task. But uh, yeah, it would be a massive upset. It would be awesome. Um, but hey, everybody, my name is Sean Gorman. I'm a junior here studying in the Carroll School of Management with a major in marketing and a minor in management for social impact and the public good. And I am originally from Chicago, Illinois, right in the city. So I feel bad for Christie's and Skokie right now. The city of Chicago is way better. Um, and uh, my favorite tradition, actually kind of connected to Julia's, uh, would be the Red Bandana 5K. Um, I think that the story of the man in the Red Bandana, it's incredible. Like Julia said, it really speaks to um you know, the campus culture we have here and the importance of being uh, men and women for others. And I think Wells is just such an incredible example of that. And one event that we hold uh, in his honor as well, beyond the Red Bandana football game is uh, the Red Bandana 5K. Um, I personally love running. So it's a fun event for me. Um, and uh, Wells's mom will uh, show up and speak to the students before the run every year. It's always on a Saturday at 9 a.m. But uh, we kind of love the crowd, their family so much here that uh, like a thousand BC students will show up every time. Um, and she speaks to uh, all the students. Uh, people make donations to the uh, Crowther Fund uh, that was uh, formed in his honor uh, charity. And yeah, then we go out and run a 5K. And it's just such a fantastic community event. Um, it's actually happening in a few weeks, not this Saturday, but uh, two Saturdays after that. Um, yeah, and I'm super pumped. Hi, everyone. My name is Sasha Children. I'm a junior, originally from Coronado, California, which is a small suburb of San Diego. I'm double majoring in international studies and theology, as well as minoring in religion and American public life, all of which are housed in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. In a similar vein, my favorite BC tradition is also a sports game, but it's actually one that takes place off campus. It's BC baseball's annual takeover of Fenway Park for our ALS awareness game. It, I went to it for the first time last year and it was just so much fun. Similarly to Wells, um, Pete Freights was someone who played on the BC baseball team and I believe he was a coach. He was a really big, you know, influence on the team and he actually was diagnosed with ALS. And so in his honor, BC baseball takes over Fenway Park once a year to raise money for ALS awareness. And as someone who's not from Sandy, who's not from Boston, it's really cool. Any chance I get to go to Fenway Park and especially cool to do it in my BC gear and watch our BC baseball team, hopefully take out the competition in honor of a good cause. Thanks, Sasha. Uh, for those of you who do not know, Pete Frades, who um, is the namesake for the ALS awareness game at Fenway Park, actually started the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge that started from a member of the BC community. So that's kind of cool. Um, but hi, everyone. My name is Maddie McGrath. I'm a senior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, majoring in political science and minoring in faith, peace, and justice. And I'm originally from Glenview, Illinois, just one town over from Skokie over there. Um, today, I would tell you about. Um, my favorite BC tradition, uh, some of them have been mentioned already, but I think I'm going to throw in one related to the arts. We talked a lot about sports. Boston College is a D1 school. We have really, like, a lot of great athletic programs, but I'll also shout out a lot of our arts programs, the first being dance. Uh, Boston College has a huge dance scene. We have about 18 different dance teams of different styles. There's um, hip hop, there's ballet, jazz, contemporary, there's Latin dance, um, there's step, pretty much everything we have here at BC, and all these dance teams come together for a tradition called Showdown put on by our student government that brings all those dance teams together to perform routines in Conti Forum, where our hockey and basketball teams also play. About 5,000 students came to Showdown this past year to watch this really exciting event of all these dance teams getting really into the spirit. It's fun to cheer on your friends. It's fun to see such amazing talent showcased on our campus. Um, my freshman roommate is in the dance organization of Boston College, and so seeing her perform was a really fun experience for me this past year. It really shows Boston College has an equal amount of spirit for the arts as we do for sports, and so that tradition is always a favorite of mine. not talk about the Boston Marathon? What, what has happened to us? I thought the Boston Marathon was a very big Boston College event. It's now taken a back seat. 
can can one of we talk can one of us talk about this big you know Monday event because it's not now it's even gotten bigger with the introduction of a concert and sort of you know flipping it around a little bit can someone talk a little bit about how the marathon plays a role in Boston College's you know year of traditions of course yeah um I mean I think kind of you know we didn't talk about the marathon yet uh part of the reason we didn't is because we have like dozens of traditions that happen all throughout the year so there are so many that we could talk about and you know there's just some super cool about being a student at BC great community events all throughout the year uh, but yeah, Boston Marathon, Marathon Monday. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a top three tradition for me. Um, it's so fun. Um, so every uh, Marathon Monday, anyone familiar with the city of Boston, um, you know, on this Zoom um, knows that the Boston Marathon is a big deal. And BC actually has the privilege of being right on the course, uh, right on mile 21 of the marathon uh, at the end of Heartbreak Hill, which is the steepest incline of the race. It's like a three mile, like straight incline. Um, and it's super hard for the runners. That's why it's called Heartbreak Hill. Um, but when they, uh, when they finish that part of the race, they run right into our campus where we have like basically every BC student out there all day cheering all the runners on. Um, it's always super fun. We get class off uh, every year for Marathon Monday. So instead of getting up for like your 9 a.m. class, you get up at like 6 a.m. to go out and cheer on the runners. And uh, just a fantastic community event um, and way for students to celebrate the uh, BC community and greater Boston community we have the privilege of being a part of. And you see some truly world-class runners, which I know, you know, for me was super cool seeing uh, um, like some of the top runners in the world in the race um, going at like four minutes, 30 seconds pace, which is nuts. Um, but then on top of that, um, actually this past year, uh, BC has instituted another part of Marathon Monday. So, you know, having like 9,000 students out on the streets of Boston is, you know, kind of tough for uh, Boston police. That's a lot of people. And uh, BC actually brought in a musical artist last year to kind of take some students away from that, make it a little easier on the Boston Police Department. And they got Jason Derulo. And it was actually so fun. I don't know how they got Jason Derulo on a Monday at 10 a.m., um, but they did. And like thousands of students showed up. I was there. It was just such a blast. So uh, overall, fantastic day watching the Boston Marathon, hanging out with my friends, as everyone does, um, and uh, going to see Jason Derulo for free, I should mention. So pretty incredible. I, you know, the, the traditions, there are some, some low key traditions that sort of pop up as the year goes on from beginning to the end of the year. Uh, and many have to do with music and concerts. There was just one a couple of weeks ago, wasn't Stoke set a couple of weeks ago. And then, you know, there's the, there's the traditions at the end of the school year, like Maddie, you know, the last day of classes, senior year. What do you plan to do on the last day of classes in your senior year? What, what do Boston College students tend to do? I plan to play volleyball in the mud. Uh, we've got a tradition called Mudstock, um, which is kind of a play on Woodstock. There's Mudstock and Modstock, all these little fun names. But um, Mudstock is put on by the Campus Activities Board, which is a programming organization on campus. Basically, we have a parking lot on our lower campus that the Campus Activities Board fills entirely with mud and volleyball nets. So you sign up with a group of friends um, and you can get any time slot, just wherever they can fit you in. So maybe you play volleyball in the mud at 10 a.m. and you have your last class of the year at 11 and you just walk in a class covered in mud. That's just how it goes. Um, but Mudstock is a super fun tradition. I actually played as a junior this past year. And so I had a lot of fun getting all muddy. Great play. I had some time to shower before my class, but it's really a great way to celebrate the end of a long year. It's a great way to uh, kind of de-stress before finals. And then at the end of that day, after they clear away the mud, the campus activities board puts on another concert called Modstock. So this year we have, uh, we had Dominic Fike perform in the lot of the mods, the mod lot, hence the mod name, if you're all wondering, but um, near some senior housing called the mods. So it's a really fun tradition. And right before that end of classes, the last weekend of classes, there's also a lot of screaming and yelling and music on campus and a lot of performances and tents all over the place. And it's one of my favorite traditions on campus is our Arts Fest. Do you remember Arts Fest last year? Or are you guys big fans of Art Fest? Can one of you guys sort of describe what the scene is for Boston College's Art Fest? 
I personally really enjoy music. So I went to Arts Fest last year and one of my good friends who is also a panelist, Delise Howard, is in one of our acapella groups. So I thought that acapella groups in college was like something on Pitch Perfect. Like this was not something that actually happened in real life. Turns out acapella is a very serious thing here at Boston College. A lot of people are extremely talented. You would have no idea, but that's something that I really love about Arts Fest is you'll see people that you may have had in class or a lab partner, and you're finding out all of these talents that people have. Um, so I remember watching acapella for like three hours and just being in awe of how talented my classmates were, my peers were. Um, so that's definitely something that I enjoy. And throughout the year, they also put on performances, but Arts Fest, they put tents up on O'Neill Plaza. They cover like the entire thing. Um, and they were just having riff offs in there. It was absolutely amazing. So I really enjoyed that part of Arts Fest this past year. Of our session today, Another favorite tradition of mine and of yours, and it's changed over the years for you guys, is the student involvement fair. So Sasha, if, if again, as we transition to how students sort of you know, find their connections and organizations and clubs, talk about that first Friday of classes, like what the vibe is like, what happens that day, and how it hopefully introduces a lot of new students to what's available at Boston College. Chris, the first Friday of classes is absolutely electric. I remember walking across Gas and Quad and suddenly I just hear screaming and there are students everywhere. Everyone is set up, set up at a table with a quarter sheet or something trying to get you to sign up for their club. They're all trying to sell you on why their club's the best, why you should join their club. I personally tabled for the Boston College Armenian Club as well as Boston College Mock Trial. And I know I personally was trying to get everyone to sign their name on the red line just to come to an information session or to kind of expand that club culture. Um, it's really, really exciting. Everyone's going out, especially freshmen, trying to sign up for as many clubs as possible and then they can kind of find their home at Boston College. So I think the Student Involvement Fair is an excellent opportunity for every student to involve themselves on campus as is in the name and just find out what the club culture has to offer because there are things that you would absolutely never expect, but that are definitely gonna call out to some people. So I think it's very, very fun. Which again, I came up with just for the record, uh, no Greek life, no problem. It's a direct, like, I have two people from Illinois, one from Texas, one from California. Most of your friends went to schools where Greek life was prevalent. Greek life was huge. And I don't know when you were looking at Boston College, if this was a concern of yours. I I've talked to some people that say, yeah, it's, it's one way or the other, it's not a big deal. And other people are like, no, I definitely don't wanna be at a place with Greek life. So I, I don't know if these clubs and organizations like just fit our substitute and fill the need or, I mean, talk to all your friends. You've probably talked to them a lot. They probably are members of fraternities and sororities at schools all over the place. Can we, is it true? No Greek life, no problem. And do these clubs and organizations really do fill that void? And again, all of you, uh, you know, are from places where a lot of your friends went to the big public state schools in your state. I'm sure any of you can answer that question. Yeah, so uh, I definitely can take it. Um, my best friend from high school is in Phi Psi at the University of Texas. So um, yeah, definitely, definitely a frat kid. Um, I have a lot of friends from high school who are uh, also part of fraternities and sororities. Um, and that's just not something that we have here. Um, when I was coming, I, that was actually something that I liked. I didn't, I don't really think that fraternities were for me. Um, and I, and I liked that Boston college didn't have that, have them. And there was more of an emphasis on, uh, joining clubs and finding people that you really want to be friends with through that. Um, and that's exactly what I found here, actually. Um, we've over 300 different, uh, student clubs and organizations on campus, and they're really wide ranging in what they're all about. You can join clubs based on your hobbies and, and just interests outside of the classroom. You can join clubs based on your academic interests. Um, there are a lot of different club sports here at Boston College. Basically everything we have at the varsity level, which is 31 different sports, uh, we have at the club level as well. Um, we have intramural sports. I play a ton of those. They are really fun. Um, we've got different um, arts organizations on campus, some of which, you know, you'd find at like Arts Fest. Um, 
whether performing or visual arts, um, and a ton of different service organizations, I should mention. Um, about 80% of Boston College students take part in service in one way or another during their time here. And in no way is that required. That's just something that students are really passionate about pursuing. Um, I think in part, uh, given the uh, uh, Jesuit mission of the school and um, the fact that students really take that to heart, something like being men and women for others, like we talked about earlier, one way you can li really uh, live that out is through community service. But um, yeah, I, I think that uh, that's really how I found through clubs is really how I found a great community of people. Um, my favorite part about every club that I'm a part of um, is the friends that I've made. That's really what I've taken away from it um, or the lasting friendships and relationships that I've formed. Um, and that's what makes them special. And that's that's something that I think is really unique about clubs here at Boston College, um, that you you really can make those connections through the organizations that you join that, um, you know, then things you're really passionate about. Like for me, I, like I said, I play a ton of intramural sports. I just, I just love to get out, um, get out and exercise and play whatever I can. And I have uh, played with friends I had already made before, but have also made a lot of new friendships on, uh, you know, teams that I've been on. And I think it, that's, it's, it's really just awesome. Maddie, if I remember correctly, you were in a club before you even moved into Boston college. Isn't that right? This is very true. Um, I, Entered, I can talk about it a little bit. I entered Boston College already having been accepted to the Emerging Leader Program. It's one of very few clubs, don't worry yourselves, that like you have, need to know what clubs you're doing before you even arrive on campus. This is definitely an anomaly. Um, but that's in um, the Emerging Leader Program is a leadership development program for 50 first year students led by 10 sophomore facilitators. So I had the pleasure of participating as a freshman and being a facilitator as a sophomore. Again, Sean mentioned this perfectly, a great way to make friends, a great way to meet people who I knew um, shared a desire to develop their leadership skills and just really great people and personalities in general. It was a great way to kind of ease my transition into college. I'd say my best advice for all of you here is to get involved wherever you can, as soon as you can, wherever you go to college. I think the Greek life question for me was a bit different from where Sean was coming from because I, when I was deciding between schools, I could have come to BC, which I ended up doing that doesn't have Greek life, or I could have gone to a school that had Greek life, and maybe I'd be standing here as a senior as the president of my sorority, who knows. Um, and so I found, I think, what I was looking for in a sorority at BC, obviously not in the same way, but I think that what I looked for in a school that had Greek life was friendship, and I found that at BC in a much deeper way, I think, because the people in clubs I've met here have been friends of mine through joined values and experiences and passions. Um, and I think it just unites our campus a lot better because people aren't just involved in the Emerging Leader Program. People are also involved in other things. And so it just creates a more cohesive community from my view. No, well said, Maddie. Thank you. And you talked about meeting other first year students when you're a first year student. But but Julia, what about meeting older students, upperclassmen? Like, is is that something you remember as you joined clubs and got to know people? Is that intimidating to go into a meeting or go into a club and you're seeing all these juniors and seniors that know each other? Or do you kind of like that? Did they take an interest in you? Like, did you feel like you felt the love from juniors and seniors that were part of organizations and uh, clubs that you were a part of? And they really took an interest, mentored you, and and you either stayed with them or you learned a lot about BC, and that was really helpful. Yeah, that's one of the things that I love most about us not having fraternities and sororities is I feel like there's a lack of social boundaries and you have the freedom to create relationships with people of different class years, people of different majors, interests, passions, um, and I think that I've grown a lot from that. Um, my freshman year, I joined RHA or our Residence Housing Association, and we have a family structure, much like a lot of the clubs and organizations here at Boston College. So there will be parents, which is maybe like four or five juniors and seniors, and they have a lot of kids, which is all of us freshmen and sophomores, and they really serve as mentors to us. Um, we would get lunch, we would hang out on the weekends, go into the city together, and I think that having someone who was familiar with Boston Boston College um, and who had had the same experiences that I had and had someone mentor them, you want to do that in return. So like this year, I'm now a family head. I am a mom of a family. And I think that that really does speak to that service community type aspect of Boston College. Like people want to help you. They want to know you. They want to get involved in your life, not just your academics. Um, and I think that our clubs and organizations are a great representation of that. One of my best friends here, my friend 
freshman year was a senior. And I mean that like very seriously, not flexing here. This is this is true fact. And I think that that says a lot about how we operate here at BC. I think we operate more as a family than as like regimented class years or you stay in your lane when it comes to what you study or what you do outside of the classroom. Now we're going to spend some time talking about activities and shared uh, passions and hobbies, the way that Sean and, and Maddie said, but but Sasha, there's also a role on campus for whether it's religious or cultural organizations. You talked about being in the Armenian Club and being a leader in that. Talk about what that means and, and what's the importance of that club and other clubs that are like it that keep traditions of culture uh, and values alive on campus. Why, why do you think the Armenian Club, among all these other clubs that, again, represent cultures and traditions are important? Chris, I truly cannot tell you how much the Armenian Club has meant to my BC experience. Coming out of my high school, myself and my sister were the only Armenians at my school. The way I was connected to my culture was solely at home. So being able to come to BC and seeing that there, an Armenian Club even existed and I was able to make friends through it and meet people my age who were Armenian, not over a phone or, or through Instagram, but actually in person was truly like revolutionary when I came to BC as an 18 year old who was trying to connect to my culture. Um, and I think a lot of people can speak to that similar experience culturally um, at a place like BC, which is a predominantly white institution, being able to find those niches or those cultural groups where you're able to connect with people who understand your background and understand where you're coming from. Um, it really means a lot. In fact, my freshman year roommate was Armenian. We are both on the Armenian Club eboard now together. And I know she came from a high school where it was a lot of Armenians and she was very connected to her culture at high school, um, but even being able to come to BC and continue that meant a lot for her. So coming kind of from both sides of the extreme, I know that Armenian Club is just always a place where we know we can go and, you know, be among people who relate to us fully. And I, I can't tell you how much that means to me. I'm glad I asked. And did you, did we know that your roommate was going to be Armenian or was that completely random? So I found her on the Facebook group. For those who know Armenians, you know that if you look at the last name and it ends in I-A-N or Y-A-N, they are Armenian. So I saw her name ended in I-A-N and I was like, crazy how you're going to be my roommate. And then she was for two years. So it worked out. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thanks, Sasha. All right. So for each of you, I, I want to get a quick, um, I want to go around this, this Zoom with a quick answer to this question. Uh, you're part of some clubs. You've been on campus for many years now. So think about of all the clubs and organizations that you observe, you watch, you see their, their actions, maybe you go to their concerts, whatever it is. Tell me your favorite club that you are not a member of and why you appreciate it or admire it from the distance that you do. So uh, let's go in reverse of the order that we went in uh, for introductions. So that would go to Maddie first. So Maddie, of all the organizations at Boston College, tell me your favorite, but not because you're in it, because you just admire it and like it and, and appreciate it from a distance. I'm thinking, you know, you, Chris, you asked me this once before a long time ago, and I said the Appalachian Volunteers, but I'm in it now. So I need to think. It doesn't something. count. I know. Um, I would probably say that my favorite club that I'm not a part of is my mother's flea bag. Um, oh, I took Sasha's. Uh, my mother's flea bag is an improv comedy group here on campus. For those of you who know Amy Poehler, um, she actually was in flea bag at BC. So it's a notoriously funny group. Um, flea bag is just a club dedicated to making people laugh. They have shows every semester that I personally love going to. I have a really good friend, Caroline, who is in my mother's flea bag. And so it's a great time always going to her shows and cheering her on just whenever I need a good laugh. These people are among the funniest individuals I've ever met and they never fail to bring the house down. So I think just from a basis of entertainment and just the fact, the fact that we have clubs dedicated to hanging around and laughing for a few hours a week, I really respect in the flea bag. I think it's me. I was also going to say my mother's flea bag also because of Caroline. So 
I guess that speaks to BC involvement, I guess. But um, I guess I'll say the heights. I love waking up and seeing their little updates. I don't know if they're working around the clock or what they're doing, but they are always pumping out content. For those of you who don't know, the BC Heights is our on-campus student-run newspaper, and they put out like actually very quality pieces, and their emails are always so put together, and I just really admire everything that they do and their dedication to producing like good content um, and really holding themselves accountable to that. So I like that I can get news about things BC related, non BC related opinion articles, the whole range of, you know, news articles through the heights in my email inbox. I think I woke up to one yesterday, which was great. <laughs> Yeah, um, for me, I think it would have to be one of our service organizations, Arube Volunteers. Um, I've heard a bit about this program um, through some friends that uh, are doing it right now, actually. Um, and it really sounds incredible to me. Um, it's at, it's actually an international service immersion um, group here on campus. So over winter break, um, they go to trips in different locations. I have friends going to uh, Mexico, South Africa, among other places. Um, and they go there for, I think it's like at least a week. Um, and throughout the year, they also have meetings both before and after, um, you know, those service trips, um, where they reflect on some of the issues that they're going to be, you know, dealing with while they're there, um, thinking about talking about, um, and really reflecting on their own personal experiences and how that impacts them. One thing that I think is really, um, you know, nice about being a student at Boston College is the, uh, emphasis on reflection here, um, both in and out of the classroom. Um, you know, our, our teachers are, and, and just student body are really big on uh, talking about, you know, big uh, hot, hot button issues in the world and, you know, having us reflect on our own experiences and, you know, how that affects us. So I think Arupe is a really cool example of how students, you know, go out and do that through a community service lens. Um, and the friends I've had who are a part of it have said it's just an incredible experience. Uh, I really want to do it next year um, for my senior year. So uh, hopefully I will be a part of it then. But as of right now, I'm not. But I really do admire that organization. I think for me, it's Women in Business, which is a very, very large club that we have at BC that I am unfortunately not a part of, but it's just like this giant group of girl bosses. Um, they get together, they have very influential women come and speak and empower each other. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that I admire about the organization is the support that they have for one another, but also the wider campus support that you see for women in business um, and the way that they really rally behind each other is something I really admire. And also the way that we acknowledge the challenges that certain groups space here at BC and there are clubs and organizations for that um, but also saying like we can do this by supporting each other and the way that they come together I think is just very inspiring and impressive. Perfect guys well done uh, and there are many more that we could also mention too I mean geez um, can we talk about leadership in clubs and organizations like you guys are getting older now and you know, Maddie, you're senior, and now it's time to pay back to some of these organizations that you were part of from, from the beginning. It may be a time to do some mentoring and advising on your own. So do you find that there's opportunities? I, I mean, you all, I know you all a little bit from these kind of opportunities anyway, but can you talk a little bit about the role you have in organizations as a leader and how comfortable you are with that and how you appreciate that in the roles that you, you do have right now? Uh, any of you can jump in on that if you want. Yeah, um, I definitely can talk a bit about that. Um, Maddie and I are actually uh, two of the student leaders for the same organization, um, which is the Student Admissions Program, which is actually why we're sitting with you guys all tonight. Um, so, you know, I've found it really, um, you know, incredible to be a leader of that. Um, Maddie and I actually both have been doing it for the past two years. Um, and it's really nice for me, I can speak on my own experience to, um, you know, give back to the organization what's given to me. Um, I found really great mentors within um, SAP. Um, and by mentors, I'm talking about like students who are, um, you know, a few years older than me. Um, people I could really go to with uh, any questions I have about uh, SAP, but also BC and just life more generally. Um, people I could really count on for anything. Um, and that's beyond like doing panels like this and leading tours on campus. That's all really fun. Um, and I love to help you guys out however I can. Um, what I've also found is just great connections with BC students um, through SAP. Like I said, fantastic mentor. 
there's another just friends. Um, and now that uh, I'm a junior here, um, I think it's really nice that I'm able to give that back in uh, some capacity. Um, I manage uh, one of the programs for uh, the student admissions program more broadly. And, you know, I like to tell the freshmen that I do manage them, that they can come to me with any questions that they have about the program itself or just life at BC if they ever need anything. You know, I'm someone that um, they can come to as a resource at any time. Um, and I really do mean it when I say that. Um, I want to be someone who's there for them through whatever. Um, and that's just something that I've loved about being um, a leader, really giving um, that back and trying to be a mentor for them um, and making connections with those students as well. Um, I'll tag along. Um, I'm sorry, Julia. <laughs> um, I forgot about the whole Zoom etiquette. Oh my gosh. Um, I'll tag along. Uh, first of all, shout out SAP with Sean. That's certainly one of my absolute favorite experiences. Um, but I'll also shout out the Kairos program at Boston College. So some of you might be familiar with Kairos through your high schools. Um, I know a lot of Jesuit schools have Kairos programs. Boston College actually has the largest Kairos program in the country. And so I had the pleasure of going on Kairos when I was a sophomore. There's about a 2000 person waiting list to go on this retreat at BC. It's very coveted. Um, but I went on this retreat as a sophomore. I had the opportunity to lead it as a junior. And I would say um, my favorite part about being a leader in any campus involvement is the depth you find in it. I think um, to have the opportunity to guide other, maybe, whether it be underclassmen or just anyone in the BC community um, through an experience you already know and love and just sharing that love with other people and welcoming them in is my favorite part about any leadership experience I've had um, with Kairos specifically. I facilitated a small group with within the retreat. And so I had five, um, girls in my small group, we coincidentally are all women, which is awesome, but um, they never experienced the retreat before. And so to share the love that I already had with that program with them was so deeply rewarding and just reflective of the depth that you find in your involvement. And that depth exists in such a profound way that you can't help but share it with other people. So that's what I've loved about specifically Kairos. Um, Sasha, uh, a question came in about balancing all this excitement of making new friends and having leadership and being a part of all these clubs and actually doing homework and, and like producing academic work that's worthy of your talents and skills. Did this take some time? Uh, do you find that some days you're spending more time with other stuff than with academics? Do you find that's all days? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the balance between all these other cool things that you can interact with people and have a leadership style and you know be true to your culture and also like taking care of your business, like doing some academic work around here. How do you find the balance? Yeah, that's very tough and it comes with time. I mean, everyone's gonna learn their own approach to it. Like looking back now as a junior, like looking on my freshman year, I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, you had it so easy. Because as we've been saying, like every year that comes, you take on more leadership responsibilities. And as exciting as that is, it does add a lot to your plate. Um, but I do think it helps that the average Boston College student is incredibly driven every like most of my peers and the people I surround myself with have incredible goals that they're hoping to achieve for themselves so they're not really just like sitting around doing nothing they're always doing something um whether it's homework or things for their clubs for example I'm part of BC mock trial as I've said and that takes a lot of work in fact we used to get academic credit for it because of how many hours a week it is um but also at the same time the leadership in the club understands that we're students and I think everywhere on campus understands that I'm a student I'm a resident assistant in one of our sophomore uh, residence halls and my resident director is always welcome to, you know, if I need to put off making a poster because I have three midterms that week or something like that. I think it's a very communicative culture at BC being able to talk about, you know, I'm overwhelmed right now and I need a little bit more time with this. Um, as you start to learn that work-life balance is really important. And there are a lot of resources at BC to help you with that, like the Connors Family Learning Center, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed with your classes, or I took calculus last year and it didn't go too hot for me. So I went there for a lot of tutoring and that was able to you know, help me find my footing academically in a subject that I wasn't too sure about. So I think you'll find it for yourself and your own approach to it, but it definitely comes with time. And there's a lot of people who are overwhelmingly willing to help you develop that for yourself. Important here, and Julie, I'll turn to you for this, is that we're talking about clubs and organizations is where you make a lot of connections and friends. 
you're also living with all these people. <laughs> like you just, you know, you, you're, you're in a building, you, you don't even have to put your shoes on and you see like hundreds of people your age that are smart and, you know, interesting. And so residence halls play a big role in sort of making yourself at home, finding your people, like getting yourself organized and getting yourself set at Boston College. I'm sure that you owe a lot of friendships to just life in the residence hall. Yes, 100%. Um, your freshman year, you will be living in traditional style housing. So there are communal bathrooms. At first you wince, you cringe. But I will say that they serve their purpose. You will meet so many people in the communal bathroom, brushing your teeth next to the same person every morning, getting used to each other's shower music. Um, and that's where I met some of my best friends, my direct roommate. This year as a junior, Kate lived on my floor in Costco freshman year, two doors down, and we brushed our teeth at the same time every morning for our 10 a.m. class. Um, so you'll definitely meet a lot of people organically, but then there are also events put on. So hoots and how. So hang out on Tuesdays or like hang out Wednesdays late. So I lived in Costco Hall, which is an all female dorm, our only all female dorm. And my RA would put on events. So we would have movie nights. Uh, we would do like crafts, paint vases, things like that. So you definitely get to know people in your building and on your floor and you're all freshmen. So every single person that you run into has no idea what's going on, just like you when you first get there. So that's a really great way to make friendships your friendships freshman year. Is there anything that's hard to do extracurricularly? You know, um, you can't just walk in and be the president of the undergraduate government. So there are elections, there's a finite number of officers in this club, there might be a finite number of spaces in this organization. Uh, you know, you've been at BC a long time, do you guys know of or think about or run into any limits? Have you ever really wanted to do something and you were turned away or there weren't enough spaces or you had to wait? You mentioned a two, a two or 3,000 person waiting list for Kairos. I mean, that's just, that, that's the way it is, man. I, I don't know how we can ever accommodate the demand, but you know, I, I do, do want to attack, like, is there anything that you wanted to do that BC students sometimes run into any obstacles if they want to get started with it, at least in your experience? Um, I can shout out um, a couple of uh, service clubs at Boston College are application based. I think that uh, generally there are places for every student to get involved without much of a barrier, the student admission program being one. Um, there are a lot of programs, um, Armenian club, we're all part of clubs that don't uh, require an application, but I um, would mention my freshman year, I applied to be a volunteer with the campus school of Boston College. So Sean and I are actually both buddies there as well, but the campus school is an organization. Um, well, the campus school volunteers is an organization associated with campus school, which is a school on BC's campus serving students ages three to 21 in the Boston area with severe disabilities. It's one of my favorite places on this campus, um, but there's a finite number of students, meaning that there can only be a finite number of buddies, BC students to be paired with them. Um, so I applied my freshman year to be a classroom buddy, but then also to be a committee chair, um, which uh, facilitates some more like logistical operations of being a buddy at the campus school. I did not receive the committee chair position. Um, I received a buddy position, very thankfully, but um, there's a rigorous interview process for the campus school. And there are for a couple other Boston College organizations too. I think for freshmen, there's always that little shock wave of you got a couple acceptances, but you get a couple of rejections. And I had my fair share of uh, the campus activities board. They got planned Mudstock and Mudstock, those events I mentioned earlier that hot one too, that a lot of freshmen don't get a chance to join their freshman year. Um, but I'd say after the initial overwhelm of some applications as a freshman, I know a lot of people who maybe joined clubs as a sophomore that they didn't get the chance to do their freshman year. And I'm a committee chair now for the campus school. Um, a lot of us, you know, get our lead from the undergraduate government of Boston College. I know a couple of you are involved in that. I should shout out the undergraduate government. Can we just really quickly explain sort of how pervasive that is at Boston College? Yeah, so I actually used to be in the undergraduate government of Boston College. I served two years as a student assembly representative and the undergraduate government of Boston College is truly everywhere. They are always putting on events. They have um, the Ohana Leadership Council, the uh, 
Council for Students with Disabilities, they have tons of things under their belt. It's, it's easy to think that it's just the student assembly or like the Senate as you would like think of it, but it's actually a ton of different student organizations that fall under the undergraduate government of Austin College. And they are always putting on events that people can attend, which is very fun or collaborating with other people, which is really fun. Um, I actually was rejected from the undergraduate government of Boston College, their like events committee when I applied over the summer as coming into freshman year. And I remember I was like gutted about it. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my first club that I've applied to and I got rejected and I was sad about it. And then I still found my way into the undergraduate government of Boston College. So it all ended up okay. So I think that speaks to your previous question about like, even when you face rejection, it, there isn't just one club at Boston College. And oftentimes there are many clubs that fall under the same umbrella. So if you get rejected from a club, which happens, it's life, it's natural, you're gonna face rejection. Um, you can still find things that are similar or you can try again, which I think is really fun. And honestly, when people audition for mock trial over, we, we give them an extra shout out because it takes a lot of tenacity to you know, be willing to come and try out again. So I think projection is just redirection and you will find your place at Boston College even if the undergraduate government of Boston College says no at first. Um, I'll give a quick shout out. The vice president of the undergraduate government of Boston College is on the other side of this wall. Um, she's my roommate and she's absolutely fantastic, but she did not join until her sophomore year. Very good, both good points. Uh, and the last thing I wanna cover, and we alluded to it, but I feel like I should give it also another shout out. You know, we share the campus with so many service organizations. And when we try to address the fact that we're Jesuit and you know how special that heritage is and how it inspires a lot of people. I mean, at the Student Involvement Fair, just the, the sheer volume of organizations that are just there for, the good of others uh, is pretty impressive. And again, you all alluded to some element of service, but I think taken on the aggregate, I mean, I'm sure you look at all the th ways that your peers are involved and you guys are involved in volunteer work. And it's a pretty impressive campus. I can't imagine that other uh, universities and, and colleges have the kind of, again, volume of service clubs and organizations that are here. I mean, have, has that ever struck you as really special and significant when you think about the campus that you're a part of? Absolutely. Yeah, it has. Um, for me, a uh, big part of the reason why I wanted to come to BC in the first place was the, you know, really big service culture um, that I would hear about here. Um, so it definitely has struck me. Um, I think that it's an amazing thing to be a part of a community of people who are so dedicated to community service and trying to, you know, use their gifts and talents to make the world around them a better place. Like Maddie said, um, I am a big part of the campus school with her. Um, I love the campus school. I can't wait to hang out with my buddy Jack um, starting next week, actually. Um, to, I miss him a lot, so I'm super excited to hang out with him. Um, and, you know, there's so many other ways that students can get involved in service here um, and both make the uh, BC community internally better, um, you know, through something like the campus school or even go out into the city um, more nationally or internationally as well and go out and make the world a better place. Um, through clubs like Arupe, like I mentioned, uh, Appalachia Volunteers um, for Boston, a service organization within the city, and, and so many more. Um, and I think that the fact that students really engage in that makes our campus amazing. Um, it's a campus of people who really care about the world around them, care about each other, and you really can feel that um, as a student here. Um, that's something that I love, just being surrounded by people who care about each other and care about the world around them. So I think absolutely it's an incredibly special thing about being a student at BC. If I could just add on, I think that's something also very particular to BC is the way that we do service. Um, in those organizations, you're not just going out and serving, coming home and forgetting about it. A lot of times you have reflection sessions. So that's like an hour that you take out of your week to talk about how it's impacting you, how it's impacting others, your view of the world, how you want to live your life. And it's so incredibly inspiring to hear from my peers um, about how seriously they take it and the ways that they're being shaped and formed here. I think that that's definitely one of the best parts of being at BC is you're surrounded by these people who are not only intellectual actually talented, um, but they're good people, compassionate people who want to challenge themselves to be better in every way. And so I think that those reflection sessions have really inspired me to be better and to reflect on my life and the things that I'm doing, even outside of those um, like particular activities. 
Well, Sean and Julia, what a great way to end the session. Uh, this has been fantastic. I think we've certainly answered the question, is no Greek life no problem? I really think that we, we really hit the nail on the head in terms of talking about the great traditions that mark our calendar, but also the ways that students find their passions, keep supporting their passions, you know, supporting their traditions, find leadership, find creativity. I think you guys did a wonderful job at explaining that. I'm glad that we're all in the same club. That's what I'm glad about, that we're all in the student admissions program together. Um, my friends have their names up in their, in their camera boxes. And, uh, you know, I think if you want to reach out to any of them, you can certainly reach out to me at, at Boston College. If you guys wanted to put your email addresses in your camera box, you certainly can do that. And I'll stall a little bit while that happens, if you'd like. Um, we have more sessions to come. I didn't get to all of your questions. Next Tuesday night is a session on living and eating at Boston College. So we're going to talk about residence life and we're going to talk about dining options at, uh, on campus. The week after, we're going to talk about academics. We're going to talk about the law school application process, the medical school application process, research on campus, and some of the majors and minors and study abroad programs that are available to our students. Uh, the week after, we're going to talk to all freshmen, and we're going to talk about the freshman experience two and a half months into school. That should be very interesting, um, since I usually don't have freshmen on these virtual calls, but I'm sure they'll crush it. Our freshmen always do. Um, and then after that, we're going to talk about athletics. We'll talk about intramural club and varsity athletics with a panel of athletes on all three levels. So if you like these, I, I don't know if the panel will be as superlative as this one, because this one really set the bar very high. But I'm sure we'll be able to find some adequate people that could staff the next few panels about life at Boston College. So thanks for looking into BC tonight. Thanks to my panelists for giving a little time on Tuesday. You guys crushed it, as, as you always do. So thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks a lot. Good night, everybody.